Hello, it's Wendy again from Summer Bay Studio. Thank you for coming to my channel. Today I'm doing a really fun project using watercolor and some ephemera and I'm going to show you exactly how to do it and I'm doing it in my altered book journal so you can do it in any kind of journal project or even just a picture to hang on the wall. So stay tuned and let's see how it goes. To start with I'm using two pages in my book which is the, um, the altered book journal and I've got quite a few pages done. I'm going to skip a couple here because I have a plan for them, but it doesn't work with my plan for this one. So I, let me see, I want to keep that one and that one and that one. I'm going to move this over a, a few more pages. Then I've just got room to think about it. In fact, I might need to take some out. However, let's, let's do it this way. Because there's lots of bulk over here now, I have to. I thought I would clip these down. So to start with, what I did was I found um, some prints online for free, and I I did a sheet. I paid, actually first I did it on tracing paper. I thought I wanted to try and see if my printer would print on tracing paper, and it does. Um, it's got a little bit of ink here. I don't know why, but I decided not to use tracing paper because I didn't want the print to show through quite this much um, but I do like the effect so I'll probably use it again for something else so we'll see about that and then I, I wanted the paper to be really light so that the heavy the pages don't get so thick and heavy and so I have a piece of newsprint that I used and just cut pieces to fit and again my my printer left some marks there but um, I think we can fix that and so I'm going to glue these down and then show you a fun idea. I'm using parchment paper to glue on today as my glue surface. And uh, so I've, I've pressed these down and now I'm ready to start on the second part of it. So this, these two pages are ready. I like how the printing does show through a little bit. And I can decorate on this. I've got um, some leftover flowers here. I can just find them. I think I'll put some of that right there to cover up that inky spot, but I'm going to come back to that. So the next step in this project is to get out your watercolors. If you work in watercolor, you don't have to. You can just use um, regular paper and you can use um, pencil ink, markers, pencil crayons, whatever, whatever works for you but I'm a watercolor, so I like to use watercolor. And what we're going to make today is what I showed you at the beginning is a little clothesline. So I'm starting with just some really simple sketches for some laundry on a clothesline. So a t-shirt, that's about all there is to it. You can add details if you want to. Uh, I'm going to do a pair of pants and you can see how simple these are. They're obviously jogging pants and um, I think I'll do a dress. Simple kind of princess style with let's give it a fluttery sleeve. Come on, flutter properly. I'm going to go over this with ink so the pencil marks don't really matter that much because I can easily erase them. And uh, how about a skirt? I'll make a high-waisted skirt with a, a flitty, um, sort of a, a flowy skirt. Put some little things in there. Now I'm just going to use uh, watercolor in whatever I want. Now one thing you could do is to make prints or scar or stripes or whatever on the clothes. Um, maybe I'll make this into an apron. I know not a lot of people wear aprons anymore and I never did really wear them that much. I'm gonna round off the bottom here so it looks a little bit more like an apron. And we could add a pocket. I 
or two actually that sounds like a fun idea just take this out of here put in two pockets so now what I want to do is just ink around these and with the with the pen you can kind of correct some mistakes if you want to call them that I like to keep things really simple and and light and you know, not too precise, but if you're the precise kind and you want to have things a little more precise, that's entirely up to you. I'm using a, an 05 Pigma Micron pen, and uh, it's the reason I'm using this is because I can watercolor over it. So as I do this, I'm fixing the sleeves, and this is very, very sketchy, as you can tell, because I like the sketch look. I'm making the sleeves match a little better so that they're, you know, the same length the body here and I think I'll make a big flower on the front with our yoga pants we've got the fold over waistband if you're lucky and these are just gonna be plain pants like this our little dress The ruffly sleeve. Notice how I made the ruffles a little bit different. Well, it's a little bit more uniform shape. You have to use these pens from kind of from straight down. ties are going to be a little more uniform as well and then our apron shape which we can decorate like this because aprons tend to have ruffles or lace or whatever are you an apron wearer? I'm not really. Only if I'm doing something really messy. There, that's our little wardrobe for this project. Now, to keep it from being confusing, I'm going to erase the pencil lines so that it's a lot easier to see where I'm painting. And be sure you let the ink dry before you do this, otherwise the eraser will just smear the ink. And I'm using a kneaded eraser, which erases without damaging the paper and without making those little crummy balls of eraser and paper. So we'll just get rid of these and then we have a clear a clearer idea of what the actual little garment looks like. So that's done. Now to start with I'm going to color I'm going to just paint in this and I'm using watercolor paper um, this paper has a smooth side and a rougher side, and I, I'm using the smoother side. It, there, it's hardly any different. So I'll just start here by doing this part. And then while that's drying, I'll go on to something else. So, um, let's see, I think I'll make these pants blue. So this is a cerulean blue. And it doesn't matter if you paint outside the lines at all because we're going to cut them out afterwards and you'll see why well if you watch the beginning of the video you probably already know why but we'll just do it like this anyway and like i said it doesn't matter how messy it is i think i'll just make a uh, different colored waistband here well, it's not very different, but it's a, a turquoise. And then with the apron, I think sunshine yellow, which in in watercolors is actually cadmium yellow. So I'm going to paint over everything. And then I'm going to go back and, and change the trim a little bit.
it's a pretty yellow and I think there's a little bit of green mixed in with mine which makes it a little almost almost neon actually but that's okay it doesn't matter and I think I'm going to do some orange trim so I'll make the waistband and the straps in orange I don't want to touch my yellow because I don't want my paint to run together. And then when the paint, the, when the um, when the yellow is dry, I'll go over the pockets with orange, and then we have that contrast, and probably around the edges as well, that lacy bit. So there's that one. I only just realized I didn't have all my lights on. Luckily, there's light coming in from the window, so I hope that first part doesn't turn out too dark. Okay, I think with um, with our dress, I'm going to use um, a phthalo green and do these little ruffly sleeves, keeping my hand out of the wet paint on the right hand side, like this. Do something maybe a little bit fun with it. So I'm starting with the green at the top. Ting you here is my is my brush hitting the side of the water glass. And I just add some turquoise here. So it's kind of an ombre effect. And then a little bit of Prussian blue, which is deeper. Nice effect. And let's go with some permanent rose. In fact, we might even be able to fit in another color. So, pop that out of there and end with some opera. And now we'll go back to the t-shirt. And what color should I make it? I think I'm going to go with a pale green, just a, a little mix of, of yellow green and some phthalo green and make it nice and watery so that it's pale, which means you just add more water to your little puddle and then take the excess out of the brush so it's not too sloppy. And then you see you get a light green instead of an intense green. So the more pigment that's in your brush, the more intense the color is going to be, obviously, and the more water uh, that's in your brush and less color, the, the lighter it's going to be and the more transparent. So you can see the difference here where I put paint right over this um, black line with made with the archival pen compared to this one where I painted over and it had, um, it's hard to paint and talk at the same time. It had more pigment in the paint, so it covers the lines more, but I don't want that over here. So I'm just going to keep painting this in. My brush is just about dry. In fact, it's kind of drying in this corner here, so it'll probably make a mess. It'll make It'll backwash and then that's just barely, that's just barely damp. So I'm going to just pick up a tiny bit of phthalo green and make this, this neckline. And then I think I'll put a little bit in these like that. Now on this one, I'm going to go back in with a smaller brush because I don't want it to hold a lot of paint or water. All I want to do is have some intense pigment and not much water. So I've picked up some orange and I'm going to just dab it in here. And because it's got lots of pigment, it covers up that yellow. 
and then also I'm just going to run it around the edge very casually you could say because I'm not worried about it going over lines it's supposed to be light and fun and like I said if you wanted you to use just plain old paper you know copy paper or, or whatever you whatever you've got you can certainly do that and just um, just use markers uh, or colored pencils or whatever you have it all works and while these are drying which they have to do I'm going to just put away my paints and give myself a little bit more room and one thing I need to do is find my I have, um, I have this jute and I have ribbons of different colors that I've bought and we're going to use these to make the clothesline. Now I think what I'm going to do is go with the jute just because it looks a little bit more like a clothesline and we'll attach that to the book. So while this is drying I'm going to just measure that. Now what I want to do is I want to have them. I think what I need to do is a t a cut it. I think I'll need to cut it. I'm going to just cut it like that. A little scissors. Cut the other one the same since it's got the same size of page. And while that's drying, I'm going to decorate these just a little bit more. I have these packs of butterflies that I found at the dollar store. Like I said in my last video, we really don't have a lot of craft places where I live because I live in a village. I'm, I live, you know, about an hour and a half east drive east of Vancouver, BC. But going to Vancouver is a bit of a yeah, it's a bit of a chore. And besides, we're supposed to be staying home all the time anyway, so that makes it a little bit more challenging to go anywhere and do anything. Anyway, um, I bought these at, the lo at a local dollar store, and this one, oh, that's really pretty. I think I'm going to use some of them. Yeah, these are pretty. They came in three, three different colors, so lots of choices, and these are great big ones, and they are a little bit heavier, they're cardstock. So, but I think this would benefit from some butterflies, and, and why not? Just want to make sure that they don't interfere with the laundry line. Let me get my giant butterfly out. I never know what I'll use that for, but who knows? And I'm keeping these because I have a plan for the cellophane. I have a little stash under my drafting table here. And I work standing up because it's so high and it's made to, you know, to work on a stool. Which I sometimes do if I'm doing a longer painting job, but, oops, that one tore. But mostly, I just work standing up because I sit down at a computer most of the other times of the day, so. So, there's a few of those we can use. I also have some washi stickers that I bought. I found them on Amazon and I like the plant ones because they go nicely with the whole picture. Now you can easily, of course, draw on your picture. I like that one. I just don't think I'll use tropical. Is that the same? Yeah, that's the same. Let's just see how they look. My space around me is so limited that I run out of space on things. Alright, I like that one. I don't want a thistle. Oh, this is pretty. Uh, blue ones, maybe. I like that one. I haven't really looked through this whole pile. I've only had them for a few days. So, it's just kind of fun to discover what's in them. That looks like a milkweed or something. 
Don't need trees. All right, there's some choices. So I finished cutting them out and I can let, I can always find a way to use the scraps. So these are all watercolor paper scraps and I will keep them aside so that uh, I can do something else with them. And I do have an idea for another video for that. Now, on this one, we're going to bring back our book and just move off all this ephemera because the first thing I want to do is install the clotheslines and see if we can get a little bit of that twist out of there. I think that worked. So I'm just going to glue those down. This one has a bit of a, a thread on it that we don't want. So I'm going to measure that so that it's just see where they land. I think that'll work. And I'm using Aline's tacky glue, which I put into another little bottle with a smaller nozzle but it's kind of slow moving glue. I should probably stand it on its head. I bought my husband a lava lamp for Christmas just for fun and it kind of moves like that. So I'm just going to put a drop of glue here and put the piece of string in it and then put a drop on top. and then put it roughly the same. Because I can see that printing underneath, it acts like my measurement. So we'll put this one over here, right near the edge. Put that in there and put a drop on top. And hope it stays there. So I'm gonna put something on top of it just so that it, the springiness of the string doesn't wanna lift off. Again, just putting down a little bit of glue on the bot underneath and on top, and I don't mind if it makes a little bit of a blob. I thought about just stapling them, but staples aren't very pretty. In fact, I'll probably put something over top of this glue just to camouflage it anyway. I found these little, little dots that I have. They're sticky dots, and I think I might use some of those. Let's see, let's pick up the colors here. Um, well, it's blue sky, so I'm going to start with that. Better start over here where the glue is probably almost dry. I think that works. It just camouflages it a bit and helps to keep the, the string pressed down. And again, it doesn't need to be perfect. Now for the little, little laundry bits, I'm going to do um, hang them like this. Now the fun thing about these is that they're blank on the back. So you can actually flip them over and write on them. And I'm using just paper clips to hang them on, but I have to wait till this glue is really dry or it'll just pull off. So here's the configuration I decided on. And while this glue is drying, I'm just gonna let those sit there and then place some of the other things that I've, I've chosen to go on here, like the butterflies in the sky. This one needs a little bit of trimming. That one looks good with that, I think. I think I'll put it on this side. And I will also add a few of these flowers, which are kind of see-through. That one's quite pretty, I think. Do I want anything this green? Perhaps, I like that. Put this one down here. And just trim off this bottom part. Although it's not strictly necessary. Just leave 
that. I'd like to have more daisies. I thought about cutting some of these apart too. I might. These are, these are from my uh, flower and twig embellishments kit on my website at Summer Bay Studio. I like this one and I'm going to make it two different ones. Like this so that I can put one over here and one down here. These things are very tricky to get the things off but I found that just rubbing your, my thumb over the edge will pull off the the sticker from the backing. Otherwise, if you try and stick your thumbnail in there, it just will not go. I'm going to just glue my, glue my butterflies down using Aline's tacky glue again, which I'll put a link for this glue in the show notes. Wow, can you hear that rain? Good grief. I mean, it does rain a lot where I live, but sometimes it's like enough already. However, it's not snowing and it's not a blizzard. So that much I am thankful for. If you are inclined to, to write in your journal, like, a, like journals are just fabulous because they can be anything you want. If you uh, want to just collect things, like I was talking to my daughter the other day, she said she had this beautiful journal cover that she bought just because she loved the cover and really didn't need it otherwise. So she decided to make a smash book. And she sent me a couple of pictures of her, of her pages. And it's just like mementos, stuff that, uh, you know, tickets and whatever that she wanted to keep. And that's, that's a really fun way to to use a journal. So here's our little clothesline. Now what you can do, once this is good and solid, it, which isn't quite yet, the, these can be popped off, they can be, um, then you can write on them, or you can just flip them over to read them, and you can use it as uh, a journal, a journaling spot. And we've got some butterflies in the air, we've got some flowers on the bottom, and I think it's super cute. So I hope you give it a try, and I hope you enjoy it. This is um, the glue like I mentioned before, it needs some time to dry and I'm gonna leave it for the rest of the day and it'll be fine. And also remember that you can do your, the clothes on anything else you want. Another way you can do it if you want is just to draw, draw the, the clothesline and attach these with washi tape with a, so it pops up. That's another way you can do it. Um, this does make it a little bit more bulky because of the paper clips but it just depends what makes you happy so please subscribe to my channel and click the little bell so you can be notified when i've got a new video and i'll see you next time <laughs>